So you might have heard that Webflow is all the rage now. You've probably heard it from us as well, but let's be real. Webflow is probably not the best solution for every website in the world. So in this video, I wanna cover three use cases where you should consider using Webflow and three use cases where I don't think Webflow is a great solution. Let's rock and roll. Hey designer friends, what is up? My name is Ron Segal and on this video, let me help you explore when you should think about using Webflow or not use Webflow. So let's start with the first kind of use case. I think the best use case right now as we speak in 20, early 2021 for Webflow is still what's called marketing website. And a marketing website basically means that it's a front, either a front for a project or product where you, you know, you log in and then you get into the product or a service where, you know, you're either you're a freelancer, a lawyer or something where you want to have a custom experience showing you what the service is about. Perhaps it's a restaurant, perhaps it's a hotel. And basically just to show you with a custom experience what this thing is, and then you go elsewhere to do that thing. So here's one example of a marketing website using Webflow. This is for help. Hello sign, actually a great service I use to get online signatures done. Um, so as you can see, this website is kind of like custom design. There, there's no template that can give you all of this uh, layouts exactly. And they have this animation here. They have all of this, you know, big custom menu. So when you need something like this, custom design to explain what the product, service, or business is, Webflow is still the best use case for that. Now, the second thing is when you wanna have a portfolio website. If you wanna have a portfolio website and you wanna do it in a custom way, specifically if you're a designer and you wanna show your design capabilities, let me show you an example. So here's a website, really nice Webflow website by a designer called Amber. And as you can see, it has all of the beautiful interactions pay transition and stuff that we usually show when we show amazing website, award-winning website. And this is something that, you know, obviously you wouldn't be able to do with a template, with a website builder or something like this. So when you wanna show that you are a unique designer and you need a unique portfolio website, um, then Webflow is a great use case for that. And the third um, use case that I think is wonderful, it's definitely what we're using, is if you have a content website, and by that I mean either a blog or you're regularly uh, uploading content, then Webflow can be a great one for you. Here's an example from DoorDash, and this is kind of like their content portal. So as you can see, pretty much looks like a blog um, for anything. You can click any of these articles and, you know, uh, check out the article itself. So Webflow is a great blogging platform if you're regularly uploading content. That's super easy to you know make sure that collaborators and editors only have access to the front end uploading content and not ruining your design and have a great experience versus something like uh, WordPress, which you know, everybody hates working with. All right, so these were three use cases where I think Webflow would be ideal. Let's cover three use cases where I think Webflow is probably not your best solution right now. The first one is if you have a big advanced e-commerce website, and here's an example. This is for Bellroy. That's actually the iPhone cover that I use. So they have a bunch of, you know, a lot of, a lot of products here and a lot of customization. and big e-commerce website usually have a lot of features that they need to have things like, uh, you know, log in to keep your credentials if you want to purchase again and again, um, you know, currencies, all these different payment uh, processors that you need to explain. There's tons and tons of features. Now, Webflow has a native e-commerce solution, which is good if you're like a small boutique e-commerce website. But for big websites with hundreds of products and a lot of added functionalities and backend functionality and uh, store management functionalities, Webflow is still pretty far from all the big platforms out there like you know, Shopify, mainly Shopify is like the biggest one and most robust one, but also things like e-commerce. Um, and so in these cases, I would consider, I would probably not use Webflow, uh, perhaps maybe Webflow just for the front end to create a custom front end, but 
probably for the back end, I wouldn't use Webflow to manage a big, heavy e-commerce website right now. Again, I don't know what's gonna happen in the future, but right now when a lot of people ask me, I have this e-commerce, my clients want you know, me to be able to you know, log in, to, ha to have my you know, profile where I can see previous purchases and I can have my uh, you know, information saved and all these advanced functionality. Currently, you can do that with Webflow. Now, the second thing would be very, very big uh, content website. And the example that I'm showing you here is for CBC. So while I've mentioned that Webflow is great for blogging, when the website becomes big as a media company, where you have you know hundreds of different collaborators and over 10,000 you know, CMS items, meaning just articles and more and more and more articles, at that scale, Webflow is probably not the best solution for um, managing so much content and so many editors. Um, I, while I like to hate on WordPress, WordPress already, uh, already solved a lot of these kind of scaling uh, and permissions and a lot of these different capabilities that are still not at scale in Webflow. So if you're building a news or a, a complete media company website, Webflow is probably not the CMS to go with right now. And the third use case where I think you should probably not go with um, with Webflow is, you know, while we've mentioned custom portfolios um, and, and things that you can do custom and unique with Webflow, I do think that for a lot of people out there, especially if they're just starting out as designers or if they're not even designers, maybe you're a photographer or a motion designer or stuff like that, and you need a basic for portfolio, sometimes the learning curve for Webflow is just not worth it for you because that's not gonna be the tool of choice. That you're, maybe you're not building websites every day and you're just trying to find a solution for your own portfolio. In that case, you should probably go with something like Squarespace, which just gives you a very nice template for a beautiful website. And if you wanna showcase your photography or your animation or your illustration, perhaps the learning curve of Webflow, because Webflow does have a learning curve, right? Otherwise we wouldn't have full on courses teaching you how to use Webflow. But because it has a learning curve, I don't think everybody should learn that, right? If that's not what you're doing day to day, if you're not building websites for clients, if building website is not your business, you shouldn't spend you know hours trying to master this advanced platform. You should probably go with something that is ready-made, looks beautiful, and gonna simplify your life. So if that's you, don't bother learning Webflow, just go with something like Squarespace. All right, I'm not sure if that answered all your questions. Let me know in the comments below if there's any more use cases where you're not sure if Webflow would be a good fit or not. We'll try to answer these questions. In the meanwhile, make sure you like and subscribe to get more videos from us about design, web design, freelancing, and Webflow. And we'll see you in the next video. Peace.